Hello, Somatic Yoga Junkies. I'm standing and I have balls in my hands, so that can only mean one thing, that we are working on our lovely brains down at the bottom of our body. Yes, that's what I like to call the feet. And I do have quite a foot fetish because I believe that where our brains are, our, our feet are the brains of the spine, our legs are the jewels of the spine, and so much of the health of our spine, thus our torso, our posture, is set through uh, the mobility and the stability of our feet and ankles. So you will need balls today. I've got a couple of different options here to show you. Um, dryer balls, if you don't have anything else in the house, dryer balls. Tennis balls are nice, they're a little bit harder, but generally, uh, if you want a little bit more compression, you're gonna want a tennis ball for this one. Grab a dog toy if you'd like, or I have these little pink balls. So what you do want is you want the ball to have a little bit of give to it, so a buoyancy to the ball, so it'll kind of pop back up. So nothing so hard that it doesn't pop back up. And we're gonna start standing. So come on up and stand if you're all settled in. So we're gonna start, um, you can set your balls down for a moment because this is our experimental phase of our somatis, somatics practice. Come into your standing posture. And if you can, close your eyes. Remember the balance is part of proprioception and we wanna feel proprioceptively feel our feet and our ankles. So just rocking back and forth from your right to your left leg, or think of the stability of your right and left foot. Just noticing, and if you can, like I said, do that with your eyes closed, or in the very least, don't stare down at your feet. There's nothing that exciting going on down there anyhow, unless you had your toenails polished, which you'd have to do it yourself these days. Maybe you do, you can show me that later. But rocking back and forth and side to side. Notice how far you have to go to really feel your weight transfer into one leg and one foot. And when that happens, does the weight go into the heel? What's the position of the center of your foot? Can you still feel an arch? Where is the big toe mound and the little toe mound? So we talk about the diamond shape in the foot. And that diamond is the big toe mound and the little toe mound and the center of the heel. And then we have that lovely arch. Next time you shifted your weight into your right foot, pause. We're going to do a tree pose. If you'd like to go to your wall, you can, but what I'd rather see you do is, if you feel unstable at all, just take your weight into your right leg and lift onto the ball of the left foot. If that's still feeling stable enough, then take the left heel to the right ankle and still keep the left foot on the floor. So we can have a little more stability here. If you're feeling really imbalanced, then lift the foot up, Take the left foot into the right shin and calf, start with your knee forward and then opening up to the side. So all we wanna do is feel ourselves in balance on the right leg. All we're looking for. If you're like me, you might be a, uh, a tree in, in the wind today. It's quite windy, so tree in the wind. But notice again, where do you feel your foot touching the earth? It's like your, your feet receive the energy of the earth. And just feeling that. Where do you feel stable? And then slowly take that left leg back down. You're gonna take whatever ball you've chosen. And this one you may want to go to a wall. You don't have to, but you can go to a wall. And if you're going to the wall, you're gonna, I'm gonna turn my back to you for a moment. You're gonna turn your heart to the wall and place your hands on the wall and fall into the wall. So the wall is truly supporting you. I'm gonna face you, but you can also do it on your mat. Make sure that you have some sort of sticky surface or the ball will sneak away from underneath your foot. So we're gonna start with the heel and we're doing that right foot that we're the right leg we were just standing on. So place the ball right underneath your right heel, line up your feet so that your feet are as wide as your outer hips, so not this short stance, and your toes are in a straight line, so not one foot in front of the other. And then feel that ball right underneath the heel bone, and as you are ready, bend into your knees and smoosh the ball, and then ride it back up. So that's where you want that buoyancy. You wanna smoosh the ball with the heel, and then instead of you lifting your leg, just let the ball lift your leg back up. You can go as far down as you want, so you might have hands at the wall doing this right now. Back to me, that's okay. Once again, I encourage you to close your eyes. 
Feel the heel bone. Smush the ball. It's like the, you can feel the compression of the ball going into the heel. And then think of that hydration as it lifts back up. And your mind will wander, but keep bringing it back into that right heel. One or two more. And this is going to help to open the back side, or what we say is our back fascia line. So notice as you're pushing down into that ball, can you feel activation of the muscles in the back of the calf, in the thigh, even in your buttocks? So the heel strike is meant to activate that back line in our leg. So can you feel that contraction through the back of the leg? And then does it release when you pop back up? Last one for the heel. All right, and then we're gonna switch and we're gonna take the ball. So again, you're welcome to go to the wall. If you feel imbalanced, please do. So you might be with your hands on the wall here. But then we're gonna take the ball into the center of the foot in all the soft tissue. Same footprint, feet wide as the hips, toes lined up. And this time you get to explore a little bit, right? So you can just roll around in that inner arch. If I make funny faces, it's because I found those special spots. So you may be doing that too. So options when you do feel those most sensitive areas, first of all, you don't have to be right on them because myofascial release is not meant to hurt. Remember that, it's not meant to hurt, it's meant to create sensation. So you can go just to the side of where that deep sensation is, that unpleasantness. You can stop and just be still. This is one of my favorite things. So when I find this, the, the sticky spots, I just let the weight of my leg bones fall down into that ball. You're gonna wanna check to make sure you're not lifting your toes. We see if you can relax the toes and just let the ball come into the foot. Close your eyes and be present in those sensations in the foot. Anytime you need to, you can switch to a different spot. We're just exploring the center of the foot. So the arch, right in the center of the foot. I work um, in marmot point therapy and whether it's marmot point therapy or meridians, many of our energy points are start right in the foot here. And rolling the center is our teleher or our heart marmot point. So just rolling that space around, keeping the toes relaxed and staying present in the foot. You can also always check in with your breathing. Make sure that your breathing is like a nice lullaby, keeping you comfortable and relaxed. So we wanna stay in that relaxation response. Shoulders relaxed and jaws, even if there's some discomfort in the foot. Do a few more moments in the center of the foot. And then we're gonna take the ball next under uh, right underneath the, see if I can stand on one foot, right underneath the ball mount of the foot. So not the toes, it might still be at the wall, but it's gonna go under the ball mount. So the toes will hang over the edge, same foot position, feet as wide as the outer hips, toes in a straight line. Now my weight is resting in my heel and not the toes, but I'm gonna think push down with the big toe and the little toe mount and bend the knees. And then once again, ride it back up. So right away, what you might notice in this one is that first of all, there's a big stretch in the back of the ankle in the Achilles, but you're also compressing or contracting the, the uh, front of the ankle. So limited ankle mobility can show up in this. So just take it easy, pressing down and riding it back up. So I'm not pulling myself up, I'm smooshing the ball Feel, see if you can feel that big toe mound all the way across to the little toe mound and riding it back up. This is definitely a practice of embodiment and that proprioception, staying present in your feet. Keep the toes relaxed. They're just kind of hanging over the edge. I always imagine that my toes are dangling in, in the water in the end of the pier. Keep them relaxed. Any visualization that helps you. I've got a squeaky floor today. Let's do one more with the ball mount. Just bending the knees and smushing 
and then feel the buoyancy just lift that right leg line back up. And now you might notice you're gonna feel a little bit more in the front of the leg because the ball of the foot is really more associated with the front leg line, the fascial area of the front leg line. So can you feel the muscles in the front of the thigh engage? The shin will shorten as the calf stretches. And then coming back to that release as you straighten the leg. All right, then we'll come off again. The next point is the toes themselves. So this one, I, I like to go down and pretend I just had a pedicure and wrap my toes around the ball. But I have, I have toes that I can write with, so not everybody can do that. But spread your toes around the ball. You're still keeping your heel on the floor. And this one, you can just squeeze and release the ball with your toes. Think of your toe creases. The other thing we want to check is that when we're doing this, with the exception of falling into the wall, we don't want to uh, round or drop the head. We want to stay up tall through the spine, particularly when we work with the toes, because the toe creases actually correlate with the neck. So keep your head upright, take your chin back a little bit. You're just squeezing and releasing. And then if we want a little bit more movement, we'll be doing this one again. We can do what's called inversion and eversion. So with your toes squeezing the ball, tip onto the big toe side of the foot and then the little toe side. So you're just rocking back and forth. Nice little stretch for that inner and outer ankle. You keep your gaze at the horizon and present in that foot. So you might be doing the squeeze and the release. I love the rock back and forth. Feeling those outer ankle areas and inner ankle. Okay. And then with much pomp and circumstance, we'll come off of that ball, step that right foot back down, shift your weight just as we did earlier and come back into your tree pose. And once again, you can just lift the left toes, keeping the toes out to the side more for more balance. You can take the foot in and place the left heel on the right inner leg line, or if it's available, take the foot into the calf. Think of that puzzle of the foot, the arch of the foot fitting right into the calf. Keep your pelvis squared off with your hips and open the leg out to the side if you're doing that. Once again, just feel yourself from the standpoint of your right leg specifically your foot. Does it feel any different? It may or may not. But does your foot feel flatter? Feel more grounded? Does it feel lighter or heavier? Is there more awareness of certain muscles in your leg? And just holding this space of balance wherever you want your hands. And being present in that entire right leg line. Release your hands down. Let the left foot come back down. And once again, just rock from one side to the other. How does that feel now? Is there a difference in the two feet or in the leg line itself? More awareness. Close your eyes and feel, right? Go into that felt sense. And then next time you find your weight in that left foot, Pause with the weight in the left foot, left leg. So how far do you have to shift your torso over to be centered on that leg and foot? And then come onto your right toes. You might just come onto the toes and keep that foot out wide. You can start to slide the right heel in towards the left ankle, tree pose there. Or if it's available, lift the leg up, place the arch of the foot in the inner, on the calf, so not on the knee, it's below the knee. Open up to the side, that'll help to engage all the muscles around the pelvis and wherever you want your hands. See if you can take your awareness into your standing leg. Notice the position of the toes, the big toe mound, the little toe mound, the heel. Feel whatever muscles are supporting you through the leg and the pelvis. Just acknowledging this one Little foot holding up the weight of your entire body, balancing your whole body. And then drop your hands down. Come out of that space, and then we'll do the ball on the left foot. So you're gonna start once again with the heel. If you'd like to go to the wall, 
Watch you're not rounding your back and spine, but come to the wall, lift up, and then fall into the wall. So let the wall support you. <clears throat> Otherwise, you can stay on your mat. Either, you, either way, your feet are as wide as your outer hips, so take a nice wide stance. Ball goes underneath the heel bone, right in the heel, and then toes are lined up, and you're gonna smush the ball on the way down and ride it back up. And if it's anything like my experience, you may already notice a big difference. This is my grumpy leg that likes to relax a little bit too much. The other one's always doing all the work. So just noticing, can you even sense that through your foot? Smooshing the ball and then riding it back up. And as you smoosh and bend into the knees, what's happening through the back of that left leg line? Can you feel the muscles through the back of the thigh and the buttocks? In so many ways, this is such an easy practice. And when I stay on top of it, I try to do it several times a week. Keep the feet healthy, especially when we've been wearing shoes a lot and boots. Maybe it's slippers these days. And smushing and riding back up. Don't worry, sooner or later it'll be flip-flops. Stay in that heel, see if you can do it. With your eyes closed, watch that we're not dropping the head and the shoulders. Keep a nice posture, postural alignment. Ears over shoulders and shoulders over the hips. Last one for the heel, feeling that heel bone and then feeling all the way up that back leg line. And then coming off the ball. Second position is in the center of the foot and this is more of that exploration. So both your heel and the ball of the foot are lifted so the whole foot is on the ball and none of the foot is in contact with the earth and you can explore. Oh, explore rolling it around, are you making noises? If you find a more sensitive area, you can stay right on that area and just let the weight of the leg bones fall into it. So think compression and release, release into the compression, or you can roll it out, or you can go just to the side of that sensitive area. You don't have to be on the sensitive area, especially if it makes you grit your teeth, or stop breathing or make funny noises. So just rolling out that foot. Staying present. What do you feel? And go into the inner arch, in the center of the foot, the outer edge of the foot. So we have <clears throat> diaphragms that talk to one another in our body, and the first diaphragm is right in the feet, and that talks to our pelvic floor diaphragm. So you can even think of the space from the soles of the feet into the pelvis, the base of the pelvis. Just rolling around or maybe being still. Keep the toes, I just realized I'm lifting my toes up. I'm trying to protect myself, so I'm trying to relax the toes now. Working into those tissues, feel your skin, the tissue between the skin and the muscle. All right, and then we'll come off that ball. Third position is the ball mount of the foot. So think behind the big toe and the little toe, all five toes really, behind all five toes. Heel will be on the floor now, lining your feet up as wide as your hips. You may be at the wall with all this, remember that. Keeping the toes relaxed like they're just dangling off the end of a pier. And then smoosh the ball and ride it back up. And just notice you'll feel that stretch through the back of the ankle, you might feel compression through the front of the ankle, but also notice the muscles through the front of that left leg line. So the, the foot is, it will influence all the muscles in the leg, right? That's why we are bipeds. Our feet touch the earth first, and then we have a sensory motor system. So the sensory part is, oh, I'm pushing on the ball, and <laughs> your brain feels that, and then the motor part kicks in, right? Well, what should we do? We should turn these muscles on, right? So that's my really simplified guide to what does it mean to be beings in sensory motor bodies. So what is the sensory part? Even feel the, the felt on your ball. 
right? Stay present, keeping the toes relaxed. Breathing in a way that's comfortable and comforting for you. All right, and then we'll come off that position and the toes, the lovely, lovely toes. So again, I like to go down and wrap my toes around the ball, make some space in between the toe creases, heels on the floor again, toes are lined up parallel to one another. And this one, you can just squeeze and release the ball squeezing and releasing with the toes, feeling that. And then if you want a little bit more of the movement, we can do the inversion and eversion. So tipping onto the big toe side of the foot, Ooh. and then the little toe side of the foot. Go slow. So inversion, eversion of the ankle, squeezing that ball, reposition and going side to side. Keep the crown of the head lifting, no slouchy, stay up tall. Beautiful posture, so you could take the soft palate back a little bit or think of taking the base of the skull behind you, lift out of the low back, take the shoulder blades back and just let your foot feel. And that's the thing with feet is they don't get to feel because we wear shoes, right? I joke that these are four-wheel drive vehicles and uh, they never get to go off-road, right? Very rarely. So going back and forth and then come off the ball. You're gonna transfer the weight, come off the ball, transfer the weight into that left leg. Just feel yourself from the leg, left leg and left foot. You can lift up onto the right toes, keep that foot wider if you'd like. Just that idea of taking the weight into one leg. If that's comfortable, you can take the ankle to the or the heel into the inner ankle. Still feeling good and balanced, then you're welcome to lift the right foot off the floor, place the arch of the right foot in the calf of the left leg, and then press, create resistance between the calf and the foot, open up to the side. Wherever you want your hands and arms. And just feeling your stability from the left leg, but all the way down into the foot. Does it feel any different than the first time? More awareness of your feet, your leg line. Get a little balance in today in our somatics. When you're ready to release, come out of the posture. And we are going to be coming down to a seated position and on your mat. So go ahead and take that seated position. We'll only be seated for a few minutes. You can come down seated, and we're going to do just a few postures seated, and then if you'd rather lay back to do the rest of them, you can. But come into a seated position with your legs in front of you. You can sit on something. Take your hands behind you. So we're going to do a little bit more with that inversion and eversion. So we're going to do one, leg, one foot at a time, though. So let's start with the right foot. Just feel your arch of your right foot and your big toe side, and draw that in towards the center of your body and then release, and then think of the little toe side and draw that towards your outer shin and then release. And again, it's usually not real exciting to watch, it might be, so close your eyes and feel. Just that right leg, right foot, inversion and eversion. And you might even feel it all the way into your knee joint, into your hip joint, the ankle's more obvious, but look into all of the joints in your leg. Drawing the little toe towards the outer shin and then releasing, and big toe towards the inner knee or shin and releasing. Do one or two more with that right foot. And then relax it, shake it out. Left foot, we're gonna do the same thing. So think of the big toe side of the left foot and the arch so I'm not turning my whole leg and I'm not dumping the foot down to the floor. I'm keeping the toes pointing up, but I'm drawing the arch towards my inner calf and then releasing. Draw the little toe side of the foot towards the outer shin and release. So always remembering to find that space of grace, that release at the end. 
but also working to find your end point. So taking the joint beyond its normal range of motion, where it's still comfortable, but beyond its normal range of motion. Exploring that range of motion and feeling the muscles in the shin and the calf that help to make that motion, maybe into the knee joint or even the thigh. With happy little smiling feet. Last one. All right. Now you can continue to sit if you'd like, and I'm going to just for the purpose of seeing me, but you can also lie back for these next ones. Usually that's the offer, the offers I give in, in class. But if you're lying back, we need to extend the legs long. So if you find that that's uncomfortable in any way, Please take a bolster, a pillow, something underneath your knees because we want to keep the legs more or less relaxed. Otherwise, you're welcome to stay seated. Going back into the right foot, you're going to squeeze the toes towards the sole of the foot and then pull the toes all the way back and just squeeze and pull back. It may seem very simple, but see if you can do it without watching. And notice how moving your toes, all the muscles that are required in the sole of your foot, in the top of the foot, you might even feel your shin and your calf muscles, right? It's just connecting with the muscles that are helping you move your toes. And then imagine playing your toes like piano keys. So move the little toe, the second toe, the third, the fourth, and then the big toe. See if you can kind of fan your toes. Like you're playing them like you're playing a piano with your toes. Maybe. You can go the opposite direction. Go big toe first, little toe, second toe. This is where I find I often get foot cramps, so go easy. Amazing the little things that can cause cramps. And then just to spin the fun a little bit, visualize just your right big toe. And see if you can move just the big toe. And you might be laying down when you're doing this, which means that you can't see it anyhow. But see if you can spin that big toe. It's our challenge for today, spinning your big toe, but feel the muscles that are helping you to move that big toe. And then relax, relax the whole leg line. We'll switch and go into our left leg and do the same thing. So first just squeezing the toes and then pulling the toes back. Squeezing and pulling back. And you might be doing this lying on your back, completely comfortable, or you can do it seated. And if you're doing it seated, no cheating, no watching. Use your felt sense, close your eyes, feel it. Squeezing and pulling back. And notice all the muscles in the sole of the foot, top of the foot. So they tend to get lazy because we wear shoes, we wear arch supports. So waking up those muscles in the soles of the feet. It's like they have to wear mufflers all the time and they don't get to hear the earth. And then you can start to play the toes like piano keys. So little toe, second toe, third, fourth, and big toe. Like you're, sit, you're moving them in a row one at a time or you're playing piano with your toes. Hmm. And then you can also go the opposite way on the scale. Go big toe, second, third, and then little toe last. Do your best. So it's the movement of the toes, but then connecting to the muscles that are actually doing that. Feel that. Waving your toes. And then the big toe challenge, that left big toe. Let it wave to me. And there's, there's some things that we might be saying interesting, right? Like my left toe, my right toe will wave all day. This one, meh, not so much. Gets, gets a little stuck. I was waving that big toe. And then relax that. All right. <clears throat> so the next one, as we go into the ankle, once again, you can stay seated or you can be on the floor right where you are. Feel free to take any other movements in between. So now we're going to go into the ankle. In, we're just going to do, um, so they're actually both called 
flexion, we, we say flexion and extension, they're both flexion. So we're gonna go back into that right foot and reach the top of the foot forward. So you're gonna feel all the muscles in the sole of the foot tighten and you'll even feel your shin stretch and your calf tighten and then just release it. So if you wanna do it to your breath, inhale and reach and exhale and release. Go as far as you go, you can, past your normal range of motion. You might even hold it there for a few breaths as long as your calf is not cramping up. So reaching and then just releasing back to the natural state of grace. Reach and release. So this is what we call plantar flexion. So we should feel the muscles in the sole of the foot tighten and then release. And you're gonna feel that calf muscle tighten. So most of us already have tight calves, so this might be the more uncomfortable one, just depends if we're contracting an already tight calf. And then let's go the opposite direction. So now take the top of the right foot and as you inhale, pull it towards the shin and press your heel and you might even feel your heel lift up off the floor and then just release it. Don't, don't push it all the way forward, draw it back, Press, you can think of pressing through your heel, and then release. And you should feel this all the way up into your shin, maybe into your thigh. So now we're stretching the calf and contracting the muscles. Feel the muscles tighten in the front of the shin. Feel the muscles tighten around the knee, up that leg line. And this is really similar to the movement we did on the ball already. But your body's supported. And then do one more there, pulling back. So this is what we call dorsiflexion, top of the foot coming towards the shin. Notice how the sole of the foot is stretching. And then relax that. Now we get to find our full range of motion. So because we did the inversion and eversion, we did the point and flex, or it's actually flex and flex. And now go slow and make a full circle. And watch that you're, what often happens is we think we're circling, but it's actually our hip that's circling the ankle. So if that's the case, keep a hand on the thigh, keep the thigh still and truly circle from the ankle and go super slow. Put it, your camera on slow-mo. One direction first. One direction. And notice how coordinated all those muscles are in the calf, in the shin, the thigh. You can switch and go the opposite direction. Working feet to me is always one of those practices. I, I don't feel like I'm doing that much and maybe you think, oh, I don't know, I'm gonna turn this video off, it's a waste of my time, until you're done. And then later on in the day, you're walking around and it's like your, your steps feel light and you're awake, your, your feet are awake to the earth, right? Making those circles and then relax. And then one of the ways you can know in between is take a moment just here to pause and feel the difference between the right ankle that we just did and the left ankle. Can you sense any difference? So pause and let your, let your brain compare. And then we'll do the opposite side. So we're gonna do the left ankle and we'll do the plantar flexion first. So you can think of pressing through the ball of the foot, the big toe and the little toe mound, Reach the top of the foot forward, stretch the front of the ankle and the shin, feel your calf tighten, and then just release. So see if you can do that without pulling it back, right? Just reach as far as you can, and then just release. Let it just come back to where it's naturally wanting to be. And see if you can feel all the muscles through the sole of the foot tighten, even that arch area <clears throat> that we were just rolling out, center of the foot. Also notice your calf tightening. And if you're seated, just check in with your posture every now and again. Keeping yourself tall, you can use your hands for support. And close your eyes and feel. And relax. I've seen so many people out walking. This is such a great thing to do for walking. 
Now we're going to go the opposite way. So you can think of pressing your heel forward, and you're going to draw the top of the foot towards your shin, so dorsiflexion, and go as far as you can beyond your normal range of motion. So you might even feel your heel lift up off the floor at that end point, and then just releasing. You can do one breath, one movement, or you can find that end point and hold for a few breaths and really feel into it. Feel the muscles through the front of the leg tighten, back of the leg stretch. Just noticing. Working through that range of motion. I like to see if I can get the muscles firing all the way up through the top of the thigh on this one. And pulling back and releasing. Last one there. And now we'll kind of put that all together. So the inversion and the eversion and the flexion and then make circles whichever direction you want to go first. But watch that your whole thigh isn't rolling in and out. It's an ankle movement, right? We're, we're initiating and isolating the movement in the ankle, even if you can't go as far. So keep that thigh still. Explore. Really slow. So more and more studies have been done in a lot of other countries that are a little ahead of us, if you ask me, in the, on the uh, chronic pain front, that they will test people's uh, foot and ankle mobility if they have chronic back pain, and there's a definite correlation. So keeping your ankles lubricated, and then you can switch and go the opposite direction. Because if we're stuck in our feet and our ankles, it's gonna go somewhere in our body. It could go to a knee joint, it could go to a hip joint. It's, it's gotta ascend, it's gotta go up somewhere, right? And our joke in yoga therapy, but it's not such a joke, is that when you have pain in your body, look one or two joints away. That's usually where the problem is. And a lot of times, part of that can be with the feet. Just rolling that ankle around. Explore, be happy, say thank you to your shin and your calf, the ankle. And then relax, shake it out. All right, so now we're gonna, we are gonna come down onto the floor. If you're, if you're uh, seated, take yourself down. So we're gonna do some movement that is gonna move the legs, but we want to move the legs from the feet. So for the standpoint of you being able to see me and me being able to see you, I'm gonna show it seated. We're gonna be doing windshield wipers and we're gonna do just the right leg first. So if I choose to do my right leg with windshield wipers and use my leg to move it, I'm gonna feel this whole thigh come forward and then eventually I might tip onto the big toe side of the foot, right? Versus if I roll my ankle first and then let the leg follow, I'm not gonna go as far, but I'm initiating the movement from the ankle and then coming back. So you're gonna be lying down Relax your back and spine if you weren't already down. Just this right leg, your feet are about hip distance apart and roll onto the inner edge, the big toe side of the foot, and then come back and just go inward first. So this would be eversion for the ankle, which we already did, right? So you're drawing that big toe side of the foot down and then letting the leg follow and then coming back versus pressing the thigh or moving from the hip. Different movement, I want you to initiate the movement from your foot and your ankle. Rolling it in and coming back. Do one more to that inner line and then we'll switch. Now feel the pinky toe side of that left foot and instead of dropping the thigh outward, roll onto the pinky toe. So now that's your inversion, the, the arch of the foot will lift up and let the leg follow and then come back. So we're rolling to the pinky toe side and coming back up. And feel how the ankle can initiate this movement. You know, we, we don't like the term rolling the ankle, of course, but in this case we do. Wake up the ankle and the foot, roll onto that pinky toe side and the obedient leg will follow. And feel, notice when you can feel the floor under that pinky toe side. What does that feel like? Use your felt sense. Is the floor smooth? Is it on your mat? Is there carpeting underneath you? 
And now you can go back and forth. Go big toe side of the foot and back to release point, little toe side of the foot and release point. That's all we're doing, back and forth. Big toe and little toe. Or if you wanna hang out in one of those positions, you can. Just notice your ankles getting a little more buttery feeling, like butter opening up, or sometimes we get cramps in the legs when these, when these movements are made. So that's, that's normal, unfortunately. Side to side. And then relax. We're gonna switch and do the left leg. So you can still be lying down. I'm just seated so you can see me in the camera. So now it's the big toe side of the left foot and not the thigh pushing forward like a windshield wiper, but initiate from your foot. So tip onto the big toe side of the foot. You'll feel the muscles in your arch engage and then that pinky toe side lifts and then coming back down to neutral. That's basic race. So this is your E version of the ankle. The pinky toe side of the foot is pulling towards the shin, but it's taking the whole leg along with it. Or the big toe side is taking the whole leg along with it. Just noticing what that feels like for the foot, <clears throat> the ankle. One more to that inner side. And then relax. And then feel the pinky toe side of the foot. And then roll onto the pinky toe side and come back, relax. This is our E version. So the big toe side, the arch of the foot will draw towards your inner calf or thigh. We're not pushing the leg open. We're letting the foot initiate the movement, isolating that movement, and then the leg is just following. And then if you wanna go both ways, you can go big toe side of the foot and back, and the little toe side of the foot and back. Side to side. Oop. So now that we got that one, Maybe you wanna just draw your legs into your body. Roll around a little bit, cause you start to get some, you know, there's stuff going on in your shins. I know I've got some stuff going on in my shins. Roll your ankles around. <clears throat> and then we're gonna take the feet to the floor. Knees bent and the feet are underneath the hips in constructive rest. So constructive rest, you want your hips lined up with your knees and your knees with your ankles. And part of the beauty of this posture is that we are so grounded. We get to have our spine relaxed and supported, but our feet, the soles of our feet are still on the earth. They're still receiving those lovely signals from the earth. So we're gonna do, go back to doing the right foot first. Feel the ball of your right foot. And then if you wanna do this to the breath on inhalation, lift the left heel off the floor and then exhale and place it back down. And just that. So once again, you're gonna feel your calf tighten and the shin stretch, lifting just the heel off the floor and then take it down. Let's switch and go the other way. Let that heel relax. Feel the ball of the foot and inhale, lift the ball of the foot off the floor, drawing the top of the foot towards your shin and then release back down. So I know these are really simple, but stay with it. Stay in this embodied practice of being present in your feet. Your feet deserve it. Just think of all the places that they take you. Perhaps not right now, but they will again someday. All the places they have taken you and then relax. We'll do the same thing with the left leg. So first feel your heel and the ball of the foot and the left leg. So inhale, lift the heel off the floor. There's my cramp, exhale, come back down. So if you are cramping, just don't lift quite as high because your calf muscle is gonna shorten and tighten and then you're releasing it back. And that's what we want. We want those muscles to go through their range of motion. So as, as much as you might feel the calf shorten as you lift the heel, let the heel come back down and release it. Last one. And then switching to the ball of the foot, keep the weight in the heel 
and inhale, lift the ball of the left foot off the floor, drawing the top of the foot towards your shin, and then releasing down. All right, so simple. Upper body relaxed, jaws relaxed. And think that your whole body is listening to your feet. And we're going to do both feet just like that. Inhale, come on to both heels, lift the toes. Exhale, balls of the foot, feel, blah, blah. Exhale, come back to center. Inhale, balls of the feet to the floor, lift the heels. Exhale, back. And you're just going one way and then the other. Feel the calves come down. Back and forth. And then heels back to the floor. And think of your heels like basketballs. And I'm going to make some noise and just pound them into the floor. Make some noise. Wake them up. They can move together. You can make a little rhythm there. Rhythmic flow. All right. And relax your feet. I'd like you to finish with the feet touching because that's a very special place. So if it's comfortable for you, you're gonna take the soles of the feet together in the posture that we call Baddha Konasana in yoga. What you may find when you drop the legs open is that they want some support. And if that's the case, please grab pillows off your couch, um, off your bed, anywhere else, and support the outer thighs and knees. So my rule is that however far my legs will drop open, I want it to be comfortable. So I'm gonna lift up above that natural space of, re of resistance and support my legs about an inch above that natural state of resistance. So we're gonna finish our practice here today with just imagining that the soles of the feet are talking to one another. They get to touch and have a little conversation supporting the knees and thighs in any way you need to. If you want to make a little space through the chest, you can take your arms out to your sides or maybe even arms in a cactus position. Just gently press the soles of the feet together a few times. Notice what parts of the feet are touching, where they're not. Are the arches touching or the heels touching? Feel that triangle through your feet. The big toe mound and the little toe mound and the heels. And notice the space. And your mind will wander off, but keep bringing your awareness into your feet. Notice if anything comes up, any thoughts. If your mind starts to wander, So our feet are part of our vessel for grounding. If it's helpful as you visualize your feet, think of taking yourself into some space in nature where you feel at peace and relaxed. So the feet receive the energy of the earth. So visualize your space somewhere on this earth, that space on the earth. Let yourself be present in that space. Create that image. And the image can, can include what you see, any smells, what you feel, any sounds. Are you there alone or with somebody else? It's like your feet are your little brains, the other brains of perception, always perceiving our next step, perceiving the earth for us. Taking us on our journey. In many traditions, we believe that the soles of the feet carry the memories of, of previous lifetimes, of previous incarnations. Mm 
Just keeping your awareness in the feet. And if you like, just notice your breath, however you're breathing naturally. Begin to see yourself breathing into the center of your heart. Breathing in that unconditional love and kindness into the heart center. As you breathe out, send that all the way down through your torso, the pelvis, through the length of the legs, and out the toes. See all of that energy forming in the heart as you breathe in, expanding the heart center with kindness, compassion, and then send that energy of light and love down through your body and out the toes, back into the earth. If there's anything that you need to release from your body, the earth is there to take it for you. Let it just flow out your toes. The energy of the earth drawing anything out of your body at the bottom of the exhalation, anything that doesn't serve you. If you'd like to take your legs out of this position for the final few minutes of relaxation, you can. You take your legs long and just let the weight of the thighs fall to the floor. But either way, still be present in your toes, your feet, your ankles. Notice as you breathe into your heart center, breathe out through your feet. What parts of your feet can you clearly image? Can you see your heels, the right and the left? Can you visualize the arches of the foot, feet? The space underneath the big toe. Can you feel the space between the big toe and the second toe, the webbing. And hold your awareness for a moment in that webbing between the big toe and the little toe, if you can find that space. Take some nice breaths in and out as you hold your awareness in that space between the big toe and the little toe in the webbing. Chipra Marma point, enhancing your breathing. And come back into the centers of the soles of the feet. And see if you can feel this energetic connection from your heart center into the centers of the soles of the feet. heart center, the Hirdaya Marma point, the space of our energetic and spiritual heart, breathing into that space with light and love. As you breathe out, connect that space all the way through the body to the centers of the soles of the feet, into our feet hearts, the Tala Hirdaya Marma. Revitalizing all of the muscles and bones in your legs, the joints, everything from the heart center down, the organs and the torso. Allowing your heart to feel the connection of the feet 
when you're ready to get up and walk again, stay grounded in those feet. Feel that earth energy coming up through your body. When you're ready to move, begin to wiggle your toes. Sense the ankles. Rotate your ankles. And then maybe gently jelly roll your legs from side to side. Or if your feet are still in the Baddha Konasana, you can take your hands to your outer thighs and use your hands to lift the thighs back up. Use the strength of your arms. And from there, you may choose to hug your knees into your chest, roll to your side and pause. Or if you're at home in a good space and would like to stay in this relaxation space longer, sending love and light into your feet, please do. So one of the reasons I chose this foot practice today, it's not completely odd, is because I know that a lot of us feel very stuck right now. We feel stuck physically because we are and emotionally. Being present in the feet helps us to rid ourselves from some of that, that feeling of being stuck in one place, right? That's Think about what it means to be stuck in one place. The feet can't move. Your feet can definitely move. If you'd like to take your hands to the heart center, you're welcome to. Please thank those little brains down there and thank you for letting me enjoy my foot fetish with you. I miss you all. Stay safe, stay well, and stay love. Namaste.